Good afternoon. Welcome to Literature One class. As you all know, Literature One centers on drama. In our previous classes, we discussed the origin of drama, then we've defined the concept of drama. Then we also look at the etymology of drama. Then this afternoon, we'll be looking at history and fields of drama. So what we'll be looking at this afternoon is very simple. They are divided into four to five stages. We have what we call the classical period. The classical period in the history of drama, we have that. They also have the medieval period in the history of drama, which is also known as Middle Ages. We are going to discuss that. They also have the post African, they also have the modern era, they will have the Western, and they will have the modern era. So we'll be looking at this series of history in the period of in drama. Then to we'll begin the classical period. The classical period was the oldest history of drama. And that point to the time before Jesus Christ was born. That point to the time before Muhammad was born. And that's why we call this period or this era BC before Christ. And this era covers within the period of 6 down to 0001 BC. Because during the BC, we count down, we don't count up. So until this 001 BC, that now opened the door to what we call AD. That marks the period of Jesus Christ and Muhammad. So there are people that live during that era or during this period or epoch, some of these people we refer to them as classical people or classical writers, particularly in the field of literature or classical authors. So we call them classical in literature because they are the coldest. And under this period, we'll be looking at the history of drama in connection between the two principal kingdoms, which we discussed in our previous class, we call the Roman, that is the Greek and the Rome. So we're making these two cities or two kingdoms together in our class. Now, during this classical period, we have a writer called Icalos. Icalos happened to be the father of tragedy. So he's a tragedian. And he was the first writer to pinpoint what we call drama. Because in our previous time, we said that the word drama is gotten from a Greek word called drama. So this means that drama, which is the English version, originated from a Greek word called drama. And the man that made pronouncement, or whose credit, of drama goes to is Icarus. There will now have a man called Sophocles. We have a man called Urapai. These theory theologies are the first set of tragedians in the history of drama, particularly in the ancient Greek city states. And these theory tragedies are the fathers of tragedy. So now, I will say this about the classical drama, is the oldest form. And the first phase of a drama, or first form of drama that these people acted is what we call tragedy. So the tragedy was the oldest form of drama in the history of drama. Before we now have what we call satire, the before comedy came. But the first set of drama that these people write on, acted on stage, or in theater, or so we call tragedy. So tragedy is far older than every other type, type of drama that we can make reference to or point to. Now, what are the elements of classical play? One, we have what we call mask. Characters make use of marks. The reason is to prevent their appearance. 
so that the society will not be able to identify them. That is the reason why they make use of maps. So it's one of the elements of classical drama. Then we also have numbered numbered character characters characters. So principally, characters in the in the classical era are only four. They are no more than four. So not the number of characters we have in films today or in movies or in the movie industry. They are not more than four in the classical period. Only four characters at on stage. At on stage. Then also another element of the classical play is what we call chorus. Chorus. During this period, chorus are not to be the leader of the play. And particularly what they use is chorus throughout. So this chorus uh, displays different or impersonate different character of humans during this era. So they make use of this. Then from protagonist. The protagonist will always make a grave mistake. Grave mistake that will lead to his fall down or to his downfall in the course of the play. The protagonist, the main character, will only do something stupid that will make what we call or who refers to as antagonist to run after him. And that's if we are to talk about the death of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the cause of his death, or for him to be laid on the cross of Calvary. He was the cause. Nobody foresaw him. He submitted. So, protagonists will always make a flaw. Uh, we we'll always have a whole call for protagonists. Then, we we'll also have what we call scientific protagonists. Scientific protagonists in the sense that the protagonist will always give up the ghost. That is, in the before the head of the drama, or towards the denouement of the play, the protagonist will die or met his water mood. The protagonist, unlike the type of drama we have today or type of films we watch today, that at the end of the day, it will always be at the favor of the protagonist, not the antagonist. But in the classical drama, it is always the protagonist that pays for his flow. So in our next class, we'll be looking at the medieval period, the history of drama in the medieval period. Thank you.